Welcome to episode one of How to TP Cast. So, TP Cast is a strategy for poetry analysis. And in this episode, we are going to go through the T, the P, and the C of TP Cast. All right, so let's get started. The T of TP Cast is for title. So when you think about the title of a poem, when you see just the title before you start reading it, you should think about what you think this poem is going to be about. Make a prediction. Also, any connections that you have as you read the title, you should probably express those by writing them down under the T of the TP cast. So what do you think when you see the title? What kinds of connections do you have to the title? And what do you think this poem is going to be about based only on the title. So let's practice. The poem that I'm going to use to practice is called Annabelle Lee. This is me modeling how to do title, which is part one of the TP cast. So the poem is called Annabelle Lee. Hmm. I don't personally know anybody named Annabelle Lee. I assume that this poem is going to be about someone named Annabelle Lee. Annabelle makes me think of a movie with that title. I think there's a movie called Annabelle. I wonder if the person who wrote this poem likes Annabelle Lee or hates Annabelle Lee or feels some other kind of way about Annabelle Lee. I guess we'll see. All right, step two of the TP cast is P. The P is for paraphrase. When you paraphrase something, all that means is putting it into your own words. But there's a difference between paraphrasing and summarizing. When you summarize something, you shorten it down. You condense it. So if you summarize it, you read maybe four paragraphs. And in your summary, you're going to write one paragraph to tell the main idea of that four paragraphs that you read. When you paraphrase something, you do it line by line. So when you paraphrase a poem, sometimes the lines are not necessarily a full thought. One helpful hint for paraphrasing a poem is to start at the beginning and go to a mark of punctuation other than a comma. So something like a semicolon, a colon, sometimes a dash, or a period where the thought is completed in the poem. And then take that complete thought, write that thought in your own words. So put it in your own words. And helpful hint number two, do not try to interpret what the poem is saying. So you're really just changing it into maybe a more modern language. Or maybe, you know, you could even throw in slang. If you say the poem had the word house in it and you want to call it your crib or, you know, Something like that. Put your words, the words that you use to describe the things in the poem. Use your own words. If you don't know what a word means, you can look it up, but don't try to use uh, synonyms from a thesaurus. Look the word up, see what it means, and then put that into your own words. How would you say that, okay? At least one sentence per stanza of a poem. When you paraphrase something, I still say, look for complete thoughts within the poem and write a complete thought per complete thought. So one-to-one -one on complete thoughts. All right. This is my example from Annabelle Lee. It was many and many a year ago in a kingdom by the sea that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. So this is the first part of the first stanza of the poem Annabelle Lee. And you'll notice that I started at the beginning and I stopped at the semicolon in, after Annabelle Lee. So my first sentence of my paraphrase is a long time ago in a town by the ocean, a young girl named Annabelle Lee lived. So it was many and many a year ago. That means a long time ago. In a kingdom by the sea, in a town by the ocean, that a maiden there lived whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. A young girl named Annabelle Lee lived. I forgot the part there where it says whom you may know by the name of Annabelle Lee. So you could put that in too. A young girl you might know by Annabelle Lee lived in this town by the ocean a long time ago. You can reverse that sentence as well. Sometimes in older literature, sentences are flip-flopped like that. So you could say Annabelle Lee 
or a girl you know by the name Annabelle Lee lived in a town by the ocean a long time ago. All right, moving on. The last part of the first stanza. And this maiden she lived with no other thought than to love and be loved by me. So the only thing this young girl thought about was that I loved her and she loved me. That is how I see that line as being written. I'm not trying to interpret what it's saying. I'm just trying to like put it in my own words without trying to interpret what it's saying. Interpretation comes later, believe me. The next stanza starts out, I was a child and she was a child in this kingdom by the sea. And I put it in my own words, we were both very young in this town by the ocean, but we loved with a love that was more than love, I and my Annabelle Lee. That's in the blue. But me and Annabelle Lee, more than loved one another. In the red here, we have with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me. Again, you might need to look up a word if you don't know what it means. I don't imagine that some of you know what a seraph is, though if you look at the context clues, the winged seraphs of heaven, you might be able to figure out the meaning based on the context clues. So a, a seraph is another word for an angel. Coveted. Maybe you don't know what coveted means. It means jealous. So my paraphrase of this line is the angels in heaven were jealous of our love. So I've paraphrased a part of the poem, and now it's time for you to practice paraphrasing a different part of the poem. So there's a small slip with this printed on it, or it might be in your Google Classroom, wherever it is, you should have a copy of this part of the poem. This uh, looks like one stanza, and it's time for you to try to put this into your own words. But first, I wanted to give you a couple of hints as far as what some of these words that you may not know mean. So highborn means high class or noble. That's in yellow there, you can see. Highborn means high class or noble. Kinsman means relative or a kin, kin person, kin folk. And a sepulcher is a tomb or a vault. All right, it's your turn to try, so get to practicing. The C of TP cast is for connotation. This is the last step of episode one for TP cast. So connotation is probably the most in-depth part of this poetry analysis. The paraphrase part is tedious. It takes a long time to do, but the connotation part is more in your brain in depth to do. So you have to think a little harder about connotation than you do for the paraphrase. All right, so C is for connotation. Connotation means beyond the literal. For the paraphrase, excuse me, for the paraphrase part, we um, translated literally the words of the poem. For the connotation part, you are trying to look for um, the abstract ideas in the poem. You're trying to look for things like figurative language, imagery, and sound elements. Now, in your resources, there should be a glossary of figurative language, imagery, and sound elements. These are things like, in figurative language, you have metaphor, simile, things like that, personification. Imagery means something that brings an image into your mind or a sound into your ears or a taste into your mouth. Imagery has to do with the senses. So if the words create some sort of image or picture for you, or they're very descriptive in some way, that's going to be imagery. That's probably the easiest thing to find within poetry. And then you have sound elements. Sound elements include things like alliteration. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. That's the repetition of consonant sounds at the beginning of words. Um, sound elements include rhyme and rhyme schemes. So you might have an internal rhyme, ever dissever. You might have an end rhyme where the end of the line rhymes, like in a song. Other sound elements include assonance. Assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds within the middle of words. Out and about would be an, an example of assonance. Here is an example that I did for connotation. So here we have the angels not half so happy in heaven. Half so happy in heaven is an example of alliteration. It's the repetition of that consonant H sound. That's in yellow at the top. In green, we have the wind came out of the cloud by night. I said assonance is the repetition of vowel sounds. 
that would be an example of assonance out of the cloud then the wind came out of the cloud by night could also be imagery if you wanted to mark it as imagery then uh, the next part the yellow there it says chilling and killing chilling and killing is a sound element it's internal rhyme then down at the bottom we have in pink nor the demons down under the sea i think of that as imagery i can see those demons down under the sea so it says, neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea. You could mark also the angels in heaven above as imagery because it creates an image in my mind. Can ever dissever, again, that's internal rhyme in yellow there. Can ever dissever my soul from the soul. Another thing, figurative language there, soul from the soul. That's called repetition. And then and in the green here, we have another example of repetition, which is a figurative language type of thing of the beautiful Annabelle Lee, of the beautiful Annabelle Lee, of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. Think of the repetition and what that does for the poem. And then in her tomb by the sounding sea, in pink there at the end, again, that is imagery. I marked that as imagery. I can see that tomb by the sounding sea. So when you mark instances of connotation within the poem, connotation is word choice. So the author's word choice. And connotation means that there's something attached to that word. So you should, it should make you think something. What does the instance of alliteration do for the poem? So the angel's not half so happy in heaven. Well, I think that the author used that to make an impact in that first line of that stanza there. The wind came out of the cloud by night. That's figurative language. Oh, that's also an example of personification. The wind came out of the cloud by night. When you personify something, it makes that thing important. Chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. That is a sound element. That is that rhyme and it's, it's impactful to that first stanza there. Demons down under the sea. That's imagery and I can see those demons down under the sea. It really puts the picture in my head. Can ever dissever. What does that do? Ever dissever my soul from the soul. I think that rhyme is very important to making an impact when you want to play with words. So I think poets use rhyme in that way to make the words stick, to make them hit you in a certain way. And then you have repetition of the beautiful Annabelle Lee, of the beautiful Annabelle Lee and soul from the soul. I think repetition in this, in this instance, the repetition is to, again, make that impactful, make it um, stand out as something that is important. So this poem is called Annabelle Lee, of course, the repetition of that word is important. And then in her tomb by the sounding sea is again imagery and imagery makes me see it. I can see this picture in my head of her tomb by the sea. So that makes a really powerful impact on me as the reader. All right, now it's time for you to practice connotation from Annabelle Lee you should have a copy of this section of the poem. And this is for you to practice connotation on. So identify those devices. You can go back and look at the glossary in your resources section or in your packet, however you have your resources. You can look at the glossary. You can look up um, figurative language. You can look up sound devices in poetry. You can look these things up on the internet. But I want you to mark those instances of figurative language, imagery, and sound devices within this section of the poem, either digitally or on paper, however you have it. And then not only mark it, but write out what that does for you as the reader. What impact was the author trying to make by using that particular device? All right, good luck, and it's your turn.